Good evening, everybody. Adam Boston with Winemaker Wine Tastings here. It is a wine down Wednesday, and you'll notice uh, by my background, I'm in a different location this time. I'm now in Arizona, um, working on setting up our studio here, so that should be set up here in the next week or so. But tonight, we have a very special guest, uh, actually two of them. We have Joni and Hunter, both from the Treasure Hunter uh, Wines. They buy Mumbo Jumbo uh, and a slew of other things. So we're gonna talk about the Mumbo Jumbo tonight. They actually have a new wine, uh, Cabernet, that they've never done before. If you are familiar with Mumbo Jumbo, you may be familiar with Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, uh, but there is something new added to the lineup and we were able to get Hunter to pull himself out of a very busy day today and join us. So we're very happy to have everyone tonight. I'm going to bring these two in so that we can say hi to them. Crew, how you guys doing tonight? Living the dream. Dreams are good. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I've been uh, pervy to the the mumbo jumbo line for years now and uh chardonnay and pinot noir always been great sellers the price points on these are fantabulous these are great you know middle of the week drinkers porch pounders whatever works but um when you told me about a month and a half ago that you guys were doing a new uh variety of the cabernet i got kind of excited and you know for us a little twist and stuff. so tell us a little bit about mumbo jumbo and all that good stuff yeah, sure. So Mambo Jumbo has been around for, for quite a few years. Originally, it was just a, a, a Pinot, no, Pinot Noir skew, um, and it was actually a California wine. Um, it's always been coastal fruit. Um, I, I got tired of telling people telling me you can't get a good Pinot Noir for under $20, which is sometimes true. Um, so we set, set out to prove everyone wrong and come out with a great, great Pinot Noir under 20 bucks. So mumbo jumbo, the idea of is uh, idea of it is that they're really balanced wines. We say beautifully balanced. We have two, they're they're we have two elephants sitting on a teeter totter. So the idea is they're big, but they're balanced. And you can be big um, and you know have extraction and lots of flavor, but be balanced. So um, we take all of our fruit from coastal coastal areas, uh, mostly in Sonoma and some in the Central Coast. And we are now um, completely um, Central Coast, um, which is great. It's it's just from a couple different vineyards that are almost contiguous vineyards, um, mostly uh, mo mostly in Monterey, and um, it, that's been around for for quite a while. We've got a great following. We've somewhat upgraded, I, I would say, by making it a little more um, Appalachian oriented, um, and then we added the Chardonnay. Um, well, let me back up just on the on the Pinot. Um, um, well, we're going to go through them, so I'll, I'll talk about that one. The Chardonnay we added fairly recently as well. Um, again, Coastal Vineyards, um, really great value, but really true to the varietal. And then Adam's quite correct. We added the Cabernet Sauvignon um, just now. You're some of the first some of the first people to try it. It's just getting out there, um, and that is the appellation of um, from Lodi. Um, I've I cut my teeth in this business in Lodi twenty something years ago. Uh, making wine out of Lodi, um, so so it's um, um, kind of going back to to my roots to some degree, and I just love the the intensity that you get from Lodi. Really, a wonderful. I, I think they do lots of great varietals, but Cabernet Sauvignon's um, probably probably my favorite varietal from that region. So, so, well, so let me ask you a question. Um, you know, you guys talked about the elephant and all being buns how long has the mumbo jumbo line been around um and i know you like we, we talk about you guys have a slew of different labels and, and so mm -hmm. forth and you know treasure hunter being probably that one that's really really recognizable mm -hmm. um our last so, show doing the, the, the one-time spaceman stuff which is a more of a higher tier and everyone loved those wines last time i mean we got a lot of compliments on it so when you're look, looking to do this was this the idea of mumbo jumbos we want to come up with a quote unquote economical mm -hmm. line that, that was the idea, something that we could get in there for get glass pours at the restaurants and so forth. I mean, and it, was it named after anything in particular? Well, the name Mambo Jumbo came up really um, t 
to me, with when you start talking about Pinot Noir, there's a lot of mumbo jumbo. There's a lot of confusion about it. There, it's probably the most talked about varietal there is. We, we, we set out to make, you're absolutely right, something that could be a glass pour, something that you can drink, you know, midweek, uh, whenever, if, if you, if you happen to open a second bottle, um, not the end of the world, you know, on the pocketbook. So the name came up with the, with the idea that there was just kind of a lot of mumbo jumbo with, and, and kind of nonsense speaking about Pinot Noir. So we, we, we played with that name and wanted to come out with something, um, um, serious, but, but approachable, um, jumbo we like the word jumbo in there because it is, we feel that it is big, but it is balanced. Um, so Pinot Noir to me has become um, almost overdone uh, in a lot of regions, especially California, where I, I get tired of people saying, I want my Pinot to drink like a cab. You know, just drink cab if that's what you're looking for. That's totally okay. Pinot Noir um, is something special and we don't blend to it. Our, our Pinot Noir is 100% Pinot Noir. Um, so, so I've had people say, well, gosh, it's kind of light in color. And I'm like, no, it's not light in color. You're just used to um, sort of Franken wines or, or manipulated Pinot Noirs that, mm -hmm. that um, and I, and I, and I get why people like them. Um, they're, they're big, they're extracted, they have tons of flavor. I totally get that. But Pinot Noir on its own is, is a wonderful varietal that to me, you don't really touch. Um, you, you, you try not to have to blend to, um, how long, Joni, how long is, have we had Mumbo Jumbo? Do you know off the top of your head? Almost 10 years for the Pinot. Um, we started playing around with adding different varietals um, within the last three and a half years or so. We also wanted to not to compete with our Treasure Hunter line, so we did keep the price point closer to um, $20 and under. We also wanted to to, um, not, to be approachable in the manner that like, that's why we decided to end up doing um, screw cap on all of them. Uh, again, to just kind of, you know, while there's a bit of a refinement and clean um, crispness to the to the design of the label, we also wanted to be approachable price point wise and just um, the personalities of the wines. So um, yeah, so about 10 years, but adding a few here and here there in the last three years, so. Yeah, and, the, and, and, and Joni's exactly right. You know, the screw top is obviously, um, Treasure Hunter can be a hard glass pour for restaurants because it does change all the time. So we wanted something that was, was you know, a little bit uh, uh, pretty darn close in terms of quality, but screw tops to be server friendly. And um, frankly, uh, my wife, it's hard to get her. She loves New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, which sort of drives me crazy because that's one thing I don't love personally. It's just by choice. Joni, you actually like those. No, um, no. Oh, not New Zealand. Your wife, your wife and I drink different it's, Sauvignon Blancs. I agree on their Sauvignon Blanc region. <laughs> but, but um, you know, she, she gets frustrated now with a cork. It, it cracks me up. So um, definitely at a price point where screw top was more convenient and also more friendly for uh, glass pours and servers and being in restaurants. And as the line is matured, we um, started the Pinot Noir as a, just a pure California Pinot Noir, not with any specific AVA. And like we said, this we've now evolved to the Central Coast on um, both the Chardonnay and the Pinot Noir. Um, our next vintage of the Chardonnay will actually be a Sonoma County Chardonnay um, as we kind of evolve again a bit, um, just because we want it to give a little bit more bang for the buck. Um, and we just feel that, that, that the Sonoma will do that for us and that will come out relatively soon. Um, this is, we've blown through this last lot pretty quickly on the Chardonnay. Yeah, then that's not to take away from this one. I mean, we're just- No, not at all. You know, um, this It's very consistent. One of the things um, that we're known with Treasure Hunter is consistent great wines, but they're all over the place in terms of style, in terms of varietals. So, um, you know, we, we really strive to be consistent with, with these, with these uh, mumbo jumbo wines. So vintage to vintage, um, we are not a massive producer. So you should get, frankly, you should get variability in um, 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 vintage to vintage. Um, it might get some variability, but we really strive to be consistent as, as um, consistent as possible. So um, it's a question then, um you guys said that this one, you know, being from one spot and you're coming out with the Sonoma version of it, 
Are there things that people can expect characteristic wise um, between the two? Because, you know, obviously Chardonnay is, you got a lot of people that like that kind of heavy, uh, more woody, buttery type. You have people that like a little bit more the fruit forward, a little bit less wood, more stainless. Um, this one, at least for me, I thought was actually pretty well balanced. I don't think it was, it wasn't heavily oaky or woody, but it wasn't real f- all fruit driven either. There was a nice soft touch of both. So for me, I actually kind of liked it. I'm not the biggest California Chardonnay fan, but I, for me, I thought it was actually very well done. Are we to expect that same type of style out of Sonoma or are you going to get into maybe more of a traditional California where it's a little bit heavier on the oak, a little heavier on the, uh, on the, uh, on that buttery characteristic? Um, I wouldn't say so. I think it was just a, a choice of ability to work with really good uh, producers, really good growers up in Sonoma. Um, so we thought, and, yeah, go ahead. Well, we did choose this Chardonnay, the Central Coast Chardonnay, because of that um, draw from both sides of um, a Chardonnay variety. Um, you know, it did have enough butter, enough oak to to please your traditional Chardonnay like people that like Chardonnay. And then, but it also can reach over the divide to, I'm a Sauvignon Blanc drinker. <laughs> so um, it's light and crisp enough that I enjoy it too. And that's kind of what was um, driving our choice when we were trying to um, select something for the 19, uh, 2019 vintage. Yeah, and 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 just to just to underline what, what Joni just said, um, again, balance is really what these wines are all about. And, and a lot of people say these wines are, ba- oh, this is a balanced wine, balanced wine. Most wines really aren't, especially California Chardonnays. There's nothing wrong with liking a big, oaky, buttery style. Um, I, I, you know, I sometimes, I love cake as an example of pie. I love cake. But I don't always want like the whole cake. I just want a piece. Um, so I enjoy the malolactic, you know, ferment secondary fermentation has happened to create that mouthfeel um, and, and to get some oak. And there is a sliver of oak I- I- in it, but really not. It shouldn't. It shouldn't frame it. It shouldn't be like what that's the. That's what the wine is about. Um, one of the hits on California Chardonnay is that there's um, not enough acidity um, um, in in the wines. Um, we really strive to have acidity in our, um, especially our Chardonnay. Really, all of our wines, of course. But um, so it, it, I'm, I'm, I hap- I'm happy to hear you say that, Adam. It should really go right down the middle. This appeals to people that I'll use an example of Rombauer, um, which is about as buttery and oaky as you can get, um, or going going the far the far um, to the to the other side to stainless steel. You know, it's a you've got a big spread in in, in California Chardonnays, and this comes right in the middle. So. Um, we, we appeal to the buttery oaky component and fruit, but we also appeal to people that like acid and um, kind of more slaty flavors, more tastes like, um, uh, you know, frankly, uh, terroir driven wines. Um, and and Sonoma, by going to Sonoma, it's not going to be a change. They're still going to be really balanced. Um, you know, uh, Monterey tends to be a little bit cooler, so you might get a little more acidity, whereas Sonoma is actually quite a bit warmer, but you get more of those, not more, but you get a lot of coastal influence. So um, I don't see a huge change. If you like this one, you're going to like the next one. Um, Sonoma might be a slight upgrade in terms of region um, to some people, although I would argue that some of the most beautiful Chardonnays um, in California come from Monterey um, and, 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 and the Central Coast. Um, but but it was important for us Monterey and, and frankly like Santa Barbara, um, Santa Maria, S- Santa Rita, um, that 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 area, Paso Robles is Central Coast. Um, but these are all coastal vineyards that we're working for. Um, a lot of people will say with Pinot Noir, um, you don't want a Pinot Noir vineyard that you can't see the ocean from. Um, that's kind of an old thing. You don't see really see the ocean from Napa and Sonoma, and they do a pretty good job. Well, parts of Sonoma you would, um, but these vineyards all can can peek at the ocean. Um, at the Pacific Ocean, so that means a big um, uh, change in temperature, and as the marine layer comes in and out at night, and that's what makes um, really what makes most California wines special is that marine layer, and of course, lots of sunny days, lots of solar energy, and then of course, all the different terroirs that we have as well. So maybe that was a long ex- long <laughs> answer to a, to a short question. Adam. I'm not gonna lie, that was that was intense. That's, that's, that's a hunter answer. It's good. <laughs> I, I thought we were gonna get like one of those like you know quickie like yeah it's gonna be pretty close. I think you're gonna like it. 
that was that was that was detailed and good. So I appreciate that. Well, in general, some people might have just been sitting there drinking and saying oh, whatever. I lost you lost it, but no, I, yeah, I think there's a lot of people like me that appreciate that information. So well, it's, Mumbo, uh, it's Mumbo, good. I appreciate that. I mean, Mambo Jumbo is meant to be that. You know, it, it's delicious. It's a delicious style wine, and it's meant to be enjoyed. You don't have to sit there and think about it, but understand that when we're when we're making these wines putting these wines together. We are thinking about those things because we want to appeal to the wine geek and we want to appeal to the person that just enjoys wine, um, you know, as they're making dinner or or, or whatever. I, I always like the fact um, that I was given a statistic that the average uh, bottle of wine is consumed 20 minutes after it was purchased, which shows you people are buying wine, uh, you know, at, at a wine shop or store, wherever they're buying it and then coming home. And that's the first thing they're opening um, and then pouring that glass as they make dinner or I guess these days get uh, DoorDash or wh whatever it is. Um, well, so. don't underestimate the people that have glasses in their car because I've yeah. seen it happen. <laughs> <laughs> this well, is, this is, a, you have to understand that, that bottle's being picked up and going to soccer practice or something like yeah. that with mom. So it makes its way into its Yeti glass and all that good <laughs> stuff. And by the but way, Yeti, I'm charging for that sponsor people. plug. <laughs> yeah, they're adult sippy cups. It's okay. Yeah, so there's a reason. It's, it's a reason it's there for. Right. Well, cool. The Chardonnay's awesome. And and like, all the, all like, the I, easier for your, all the easier for your screw cap. <laughs> well, absolutely. That's even why it's even better. These are not, you don't even have to wine opener. Although there is a wine opener in my car at all times. So. Yeah. Same, same. Well, that's awesome. I appreciate explaining in detail. That I mean, it's good to know and make sure that people understand the idea of the Chardonnay and and what's going to be happening and, and and so forth. So and like I said, the, the, these mumbo jumbo wines have been around for a little while and. Um, you should be able to find these at most of your local retail shops. Um, if you can't find any wines that, on any shows we do, it's not difficult. Honestly, any boutique wine shop is going to watch your business. So just call them and say, hey, I'm looking for these wines. Can you please bring it in for me? They will bring it in every time. It's not a, it's not a hard time. But the mumbo jumbo should be very easy for them to bring it to. Um, you guys have pretty – is it pretty decent production on this stuff, at least in – in, in the Cleveland neck of the woods where we have most of our, our followers? Oh, yeah, yes, yes. I mean, we, we um, Ohio is our, one of our top markets, and we have very good representation there. Our distributor there has done an incredible job. Um, Euro is awesome. I don't know if Kieran and Gabe um, and company are on. Um, um, Adam's known Kieran longer than I have, um, and they, they've worked there for a long time. So they do an incredibly good job. And, again, you should find these wines around. Um, you know, I do urge people to go to wine shops um, and, you know, we're not in uh, uh, large box, a lot of large box stores. Um, we're small, we're, we're more crafty, we're more boutique. Like, absolutely, ask any any retailer to have this point. If there's ever a wine you can't get, um, ask ask the retailer and, and, and they'll work really hard to get it in your hands. I mean, that's, 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 um, it comes up all the time, you know, one, one wine, a wine shop or, or whatever can't carry all the wines um, out there. So please ask for it if it's something you're looking for. That's if you absolutely can't find it anywhere, there is threefingerwines.com. Correct. And I do put those links up online. So, and I know that uh, Joni's real, real good about getting it. She actually, I, I, I kind of, uh, I bought some wine back in Cleveland and I sort of left it there when I packed. So <laughs> I, I hit her up and I'm like, can you get me like some mumbo jumbo like statin? She made it happen. It showed up today. So, Johnny, thank you. And by the way, Johnny, just you know, I really like your setup tonight. Like the bottom oh, you place, but you got your glass, you got a fireplace in the background. Like it looks very it's sharp. Still ridiculously cold, even though the ski mountain just closed. It looks good. <laughs> and that's yeah, actually it's, it's too cold. The picture you look, you oh. can see it's actually a kit fox. So that was our original. Um, that's still our license is under kit fox. So that's an actual. San Joaquin Kit Fox, where we where we um, were born, if you will. So, yeah, Joni's setup looks a lot better than my hotel room at the moment. So I'm pretty jealous. <laughs> well, Hunter, at least at least the background of where you're you're posted up right now is a kind of grapeish color, so it kind of has a, a wine theme. <laughs> <Good. laughs> so you're, you're solid, man. You're solid. So, Good. all right. Well, let's get into. Uh, I know we've got two more to go. Let's get into the second one. I actually just poured myself a little bit of the Pinot Noir. So, um, and I'm sure everyone else is either. A uh, quarter of a way, halfway, or some people may have just killed that whole bottle of Chardonnay and just ready to get to the next <laughs> round. So, so um, Adam, I know you are a huge Pinot uh, Noir fan. So, um, obviously, in your feedback and your knowledge on Pinot Noir, um, probably eclipses um, ninety-nine point nine percent of the people out there. So, 
Um, again, I kind of mentioned it. This is, this is Central Coast. Um, so some Monterey fruit, actually some some um, more Southern fruit as well um, from kind of the Santa Barbara region. 100% um, Pinot Noir. Uh, this actually does use, we use some French oak in this. This isn't a ton of oak, um, but Pinot Noir likes oak, and, in my opinion. And um, I don't think it benefits from a tremendous amount of oak, but kind of kissed by oak, if you will. Um, I don't remember exactly how long it was It was in barrel, um, but it was a mix of new and um, um, used oak. And the way we, the reason we do that is because we don't want to impart the wine with too much oakiness. So we use, um, I'm sorry, not, not use, um, neutral barrels. Um, so neutral barrels um, are light toast or not toasted. So you're going to get the benefit of aging in oak, um, but you're not going to get a lot of kind of, uh, uh, um, I don't want to say toasted toasted oak flavors, but you should get some. Um, and that that that's that's ideal for me. Um, the color is proper because it is actually 100% Pinot Noir. A lot of a lot of Pinot Noirs they add different things to it, and I understand. I'm 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 very much into blending. I just really don't love to do it with Pinot Noir. Um, so that should actually be a nice color. You should it should have some opaqueness to it. And um, again, this is a very delicious style. So you get a you should get a lot of fruit on the front. And then you get some acid, and then you should have a nice long finish that makes you want to come back to the next sip. Um, it's great food wine. Pinot Noir is one of the more versatile food wines, in my opinion. You can mess it up a lot of the time, too, if you're taking, like, a for, for our style Pinot Noir. You're not going to want to necessarily do a real charred steak, but um, most foods really pair well and, and, and get better with Pinot Noir as, our, as does our Pinot Noir get better with food. Um, but this is not a food necessary wine. Um, drinks great on its own. This is um, very easy. I found in my house to go through a bottle um, to where the to the point where I kind of argue with my wife of or, or Joni if we're hanging out like if if, if this was the first bottle or not. Um, um, <laughs> go ahead, please. If you if you have any. No, answers. I just just chuckling at you. Yeah. Nothing again. Nothing new. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, um, this, we don't do, um, you know, we have other, other wines. We do the treasure hunter. Um, we've got some other lines. It's very rare that we actually do Pinot Noir in those, in those lines. Pinot is such a fragile grape, um, and fragile wine that when you bottle it, um, it can sometimes take a while to, um, come back. It really suffers from bottle shock a tremendous amount. Um, that's one of the reasons we don't do a, a lot of Pinot Noirs for Treasure Hunter because it's hard to do and that's a different model. Whereas these wines, we bottle a very good amount. We let them we let them rest so that they're drinking perfectly and then we release them. Um, so that's that's a little bit different. But you know, Pinot Noir is a is a is a Pinot Noir has a lot of mysticism around it. Almost, it's so it's very romantic. I, I, I'll try not to talk about the movie that made Pinot Noir famous, but there was a movie that came out that made Pinot Noir really famous. And what that yeah, is—that's nothing that's wrong about talking about that movie. It was actually a great movie. It is a great movie, Save even if you're not into wine. <laughs> yeah, even if you're not into wine, I think it's a great movie. And there's books. There's three books. Um, we're talking about Sideways, um, but that movie romanticizes Pinot Noir, and may, and rightfully so. But I do remember right after the movie, where and they planted a bunch of Pinot Noir everywhere. I was seeing it in in the in the Central Valley places that. Maybe you wouldn't normally typically grow Pinot Noir, but they're, 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 they were getting as much as they, they needed as much as they could to, to, to um, meet the man. And what that movie did to, to me was sort of drive down the quality overall of Pinot Noir and um, frankly raise the quality of Merlot. So that to me, the Merlot is one of, out of California is um, very, very good now, um, you know, if you're getting it from a, a great producer. And on average, Pinot Noir went down. So it was really hard for us to work to find the vineyards and, and the producers that that worked on the level that we want them to that we wanted them to. Um, but that was the idea behind Mumbo Jumbo, and that's what really started happening. You used to get a ton of great Pinots under twenty bucks, and with the with the demand and Pinot that went up, we started getting wines Pinot Noirs that were were blended. They were blending a lot with Syrah, which added color and guts to it. By the way, I love Syrah. Um, Syrah is a, is a under appreciated varietal in my opinion, but they're adding things like Zinfandel, they're adding color, they're adding things to it because they want them to drink 
um, really big and huge and massive. And to me, um, and, and philosophically, I think for, for Joni and I, that's not what we think Pinot Noir is. It's a beautiful wine. It should be balanced. It should have acidity. It should have plenty of fruit, but it should also have some earthiness to it, maybe some kind of mushroom flavors. And um, hopefully we're achieving that. Joni, what, what, you, what's you tell me, yeah, Joni, what do you like about this Pinot Noir? I'll be honest with you, like, you know, you said, you know, like you nailed it. You told me like, Adam, you know, you like, you like Pinot Noir. And yeah. that, that kind of <laughs> has been my favorite wine. This goes back to um, a bottle of Bouchain Vineyards, 1993. That's what, wow. that's what totally got me. I believe it's, I believe it's Carneros area. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can and see that. that. That wine is what turned me to Pinot Noir and then I was lucky enough that one of my best friends in the whole world, he is the associate winemaker at Tory Moore up in the Dundee Hills in Oregon, the Wyoming Valley. And I did harvest a couple of years up there with him and got a whole new appreciation and respect for Pinot and, and how it's made. And um, I think the wines are they're crazy good. I mean, you've got you've got California Pinots and uh, a lot of stuff that's great out of the Russian River and Oregon that has that balance between California and Burgundy. And then you have your true Burgundian wines and, you know, for, for the price point on this wine, honestly, this wine's pretty killer. I mean, you you cannot find good Pinot Noir for less than seventeen, eighteen dollars. Like realistically, it's There's very, no very, very hard. No way. I mean, and, and that's like being not kind to some people. Yeah, not so, the not the taste like Pinot, not the taste. No, of exactly. I mean, they're gonna taste. Well, they're gonna be jagged. You, they're not gonna be feminine. They're not gonna be. It's they're just they're, they're gonna have holes in it. So. Yeah. To find a good bottle of Pinot under 20 bucks is very challenging these days. And, you know, this is what, this is under 15, isn't it? Around 15? It depends on. Uh, between, it depends on the market between 15 and 19, really. Yeah. So yeah. for the money, I mean, this thing's, it's a steal. If you like Pinot and you want a good representation of Pinot, I think it's a steal. I love the fruit that comes forward to it. I get a, I definitely get the acid, which is what I'm looking for in a Pinot. And I get a little bit of that light toast. It's not heavily oaked. Um, it's it's still a California style, but it's it's slightly feminine, which is what I think a Pinot should be. And Hunter, like Hunter mentioned earlier, that, that, that there's some kind of Franken wine um, Pinots on the market that unfortunately that they've been commercialized so much that they've kind of gone to what they think people want, which is more sugar, <laughs> unfortunately. And there's a, a, a lot of, not a lot, there's a few large commercial, Pinots that I can think of that are entirely not Pinot to me at all. Um, Hunter will also attest that when I started working for him, I was like, California Pinot, eh. Because <laughs> I was uh, pretty uh, Oregon centric as far as my taste for uh, a Pinot. I, I like I like mineral, I like dirt, I like earth, um, a little bit of acid, but, and, you know, fruit lingering through but not as your like main thing and i had to apologize to him eventually <laughs> as, as we kind of um like i said evolved um some of our choices for what we we're putting in this bottle i just was like okay now I, now i love this <laughs> like you've cha you've changed my mind about california he knows so um and that was our i think our goal to just keep it um, as pure California style Pinot as possible. And um, again, with the Mama Jumbo as our goal is always to keep it balanced. And for me, that meant that it was earthy enough for me to like it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and But yet still true to its form. Um, is that what you're looking for, Hunter? <laughs> Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, need to admit that you're right. <laughs> no, that, that's great. Thank you. I mean, Willamette, which, which you say like, gosh, damn it. Um, <laughs> people say it every different way. I love those wines too. And I love Burgundy. I, I love all the different regions. Um, you you want to, you want to, in California, you're not going to try to make wines that take, taste like Willamette and you're not going to try to taste wines like Burgundy. They should taste like wines from California. You can take you can take some um, some lessons from those areas, but but whenever you're trying to make a wine taste like like it's from somewhere else, to me, you're doing yourself you're doing the wine and vineyard a, a disservice because that's why there's so many great regions. You know, um, New Zealand does a great job. There's so many great, re great great regions for Pinot Noir, 
there's plenty of regions um, that could not grow, be growing Pinot Noir, in my opinion. Um, if there's a lot of Ohio folks on here, I've had it, I've, who I've, my wife used to think I had like a second wife there or something because I spent so much time there, but which I do not. Um, if you're on beer, there's no second wife in Ohio. Um, but, but um, you know, Pinot, I saw some Pinot Noir vineyards or wine releases from there, and I was like, gosh, you know, that's probably not the right varietal for this area, but, you know, God bless them. They're, they're going to, different regions are going to give it a shot because they, because there's such a fondness. Pinot Noir probably has the, Pinot Noir and Cabernet, but Pinot Noir has probably, to me, the most cult following where people are, um, almost have religious fervor over the varietal. So it's fun to work with the varietal, but you have to be very careful. You, it, again, it's a, it's a thin skin grape. It's hard to grow. It's hard to make. Um, so to hit a consistent style that, that again, um, is balanced, it was, was, was our real um, driving force. And hopefully, hopefully we do that. Hopefully we achieve that. I think you did. I really do. And I, I think what you said is extremely, extremely important. You know, if, if you're getting grapes from California, you should make a California Pinot. You should not yeah. try to make something that it's not because it's, it just doesn't work that way. And it's nice to have, you know, differences. And, and some people like California Pinots. They, they might, in general, I think they're a little more richer. They might have a little bit more depth sometimes. I mean, yeah. um, they're just a little bit bigger, but it all depends on what you like. And I like Pinots from all over. It all depends. I mean, yeah. they, they, they pair so well with so many different foods, it's unreal. I mean, from fishes to meats to everything, like the most, like you said earlier, one of the most versatile varietals on the planet. The only other ver more versatile varietal, or not varietal, I guess, styles of wine is probably rosé that I can think of, um, which goes pretty much with everything. Um, and then, of course, um, bubbles go well with everything. But uh, And, and rosé, in many cases, made from Pinot Noir. Lovely. Some of my favorite ones are made out of Pinot Noir. Absolutely. Agreed. Agreed. More feminine, more delicate, and you can they're just – and it's funny. I've had people get offended by the term feminine and masculine. Please don't get offended. I can use Monster Truck and Ferrari. If you want uh, Pinot Noir, to me, you should drink more like a Ferrari, um, whereas Cabernet drinks maybe more like a monster truck. So, I hope people don't get offended because I think it's a compliment to a compliment. both sides. As a father of three daughters, it couldn't be a bigger compliment. So right. Think, yeah. Absolutely. Well, I very pleased. Uh, I think the Pinot Noir is fantastic. So, once again, very, very well done, sir. Awesome. We, Thank you. Do we I have any look at comments? Are there any questions or anything? Um, let's see. Well, I got. Let's see. I do love questions because otherwise, Joni, Joni and Adam heard me just talk and talk and talk. <laughs> Someone asked if we could show the color. So here, what I'll do is just, just to maybe the glass. Yeah, because I mean, <laughs> maybe some people didn't like got the Chardonnay that didn't get the Pinot or vice versa. So I don't know if how easy that is. It's hard. No, I think it's hard. I think it's hard. Of course, um, we're all so the reflections and whatnot. Well, but, but, but go ahead. I mean, it has a bit of like a blue-red tinge to it. It's not as thick maybe as, it's definitely not as thick as the Cabernet is going to be. It has a little bit more translucence to it. Um, and I think that just the nature of the wine, you can taste that, I guess, in my mind. Yeah, I mean, we did extended maceration on it. So, you know, it did sit on the skins, um, which I uh, you know, get some colors from the skins, um, but not, hopefully not over overdid that when you start getting to me too much tannin in it but you know going back to some of the styles there i won't mention any brands but probably the most popular california pinot noir um and it's got a big following and it's not a not a criticism Mar against large them. marketing budget well yeah they're owned by one of the largest <laughs> wine brands but to me that doesn't taste like pinot noir and i have people say all the time oh you, you know i like pinot noir i like this and i'm like huh Okay, well, nothing wrong. You like what you like, and that's cool. But I do urge people to um, try other Pinot Noirs from California that are 100% Pinot Noir, um, um, because because it's it's the it's it's one of the varietals that to me you don't really blend to. That being said, we have done one not under Mumbo Jumbo, but we've done a Treasure Hunter that actually had um, some some other another varietal in it. Percent Barbera. And it was Barbera and it was delicious. So it I, was I, amazing. I broke my own rule. But Mambo Jumbo is always 100% Pinot Noir, 100%, you know, California. It's a very fresh, to me, it has a lot of freshness tasting to it. Um, but some of that earth and some of that more minerality kind of uh, mushroom, mushroomy component, which I, which I love in Pinot Noir, which frankly, um, um, Willamette does a really good job. I, I love that mushroomy component to it. But I agree. we got responses of that. Um, again, great food, 
great food wine, but an awesome wine on its own. Um, and, you know, manageable alcohol on it, too. Um, it's You get plenty of California Pinots that are pushing 15 or 16% alcohol, which is just maybe, you know, that's okay. I, 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 I'm just not going to... A little uh, high for a Pinot. I mean, it, it, I mean, it's 14.2. I mean, for a Pinot, it is actually... Has been it's a, still kind of high. Like, you usually want... You usually see Pinots right around the 12 and 13. a half. Yeah, yeah 13, 12 and maybe. 13. Not, yeah. But not you don't 13. get the heat on this. Like, being at, like, 14 plus no, no. on this... I actually thought I'd pick up more of that alcohol, even in the nose, like that heat. And you really don't. It's 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 not there at all. So even though the alcohol is a little bit higher, it's 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 super soft and very subtle. Awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah, you you can you can get away. You can I don't want to say get away with it, but you can have higher alcohol if you have other flavor components in there that balance it out. So um, I've actually had very high alcohol wines. Um, that blew me away when I saw the alcohol because they still had balance. And typically that's being done with fruit um, and oak and, and the other nuances, um, you know, that are inherent in the terroir. That we'll Just out of curiosity with this Pinot, you guys, it's is this 100% Pinot or do you guys add any like Ciroc? I know sometimes you see a little yes, bit, 3 to 5% of something added just just to change it up a little bit, give it a little bit different style, but. We don't. Not, on, not on this one. We did do it with a, a treasure hunter. Um, a while back, um, but it was only because it benefited the wine. Honestly, it um, was almost that one was almost too earthy, and so we add like I we mentioned earlier, we added ten percent Barbera to brighten it up. And most people would never know, um, but we were just straightforward about it because um, it made it better. We thought it was cool. <laughs> it just made it better. Actually, that was. Um that was an Oregon wine. Um, that was yeah. Oregon Pinot. You know. Rattlesnake Hills. Yep, it was Rattlesnake Hills, which is not known for Pinot Noir. Um, I think we almost had to tame it down. It was so delicious on its own. And I think it was Joni. He's like, let's add a little Barbera. And I'm like, I'm not adding Barbera. It was, from, it was the same vintage from the same vineyard. And yep. we had it on that tasting. And I just said, let's just look at this. And we did. And it worked. It, it worked. And it was better. So I'm not, I'm not totally against adding um, um, different different wines uh, or different varietals to Pinot Noir because I've done it. But um, Mambo Jumbo is all about being pure, pure and Pinot Noir. Um, so yeah, it, it's they are they'll add three to five percent. You know, you only have to be seventy five percent of a varietal to call it that varietal in California. So I know that. Well, I, I'm confident that a lot of Pinot Noirs in California are seventy five percent Pinot Noir and twenty five percent something else or and again that's okay um um they're making kind of customized pinot noir wines but i tr we are we really try to leave it alone and, and um let the grape speak for itself well that's a good thing I, I sometimes i think i worry that people try to over artistic it like just try to control it too much and whether they're adding you know smoke flavor and this and that it's just you can I really think it's sometimes good just to let the grapes do the talking. It is amazing. Um, wine is w one product that doesn't have any labeling issues. So you do not have to put, I don't have to put what is in my bottle of wine. Everything we do contains grapes. So it's real simple, grapes and water. It's like, that's what it is. But some of the bigger brands are, um, and I use the term Franken wine, they're, they're more manipulated and you can add, you can add flavors with concentrates, probably the biggest winery in California. Their, their secret um, is actually apple juice concentrate. Um, so some of those things, a lot of people say, Calif I've heard California wines give me more of a headache than say a European wine. That could be a number of different reasons. We might be using more oak. Um, Typically, it's not a sulfite issues. There's more sulfites in a banana than a bottle of wine um, and in and, and, and a pre-packed chicken than a bottle of wine. Some people do have a sulfite issue. But a lot of the times, to me, it's because the big, big California brands, and you might be in love with them, and that's, that's nothing wrong with that, but they're adding things in there that aren't wine. So I sometimes refer to them as wine-flavored wine drink. Um, that's, that's a little maybe overly critical. But um, all of our all of our wines contain grapes, and that's it. But there's a there's a big push. It's kind of interesting. There's a big push by small producers like us and more boutique for truth and labeling. Um, it'll be a big challenge because if you saw what was in um, 
big mass produced wines, they actually would read like the, you know, the back of a Twinkie wrapper sometimes, maybe not that bad. Um, but, but, but there's things in there that are not wine, they're flavor, they're flavoring agents and components and concentrates. Um, whereas that's why you typically go to, to a, a wine shop or, or get to know your, your SOM or get to know your, 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 um, person selling you the wine so you can kind of steer clear of those and try some really pure wines if that's fair and not trying to be too critical because some of those wines taste great and are delicious and there's that's no why we do what we do because the smaller boutique and i guess personality of it is what we want to do and it's what our customers have come to expect from us and we're not going to change that. so well said well, it's interesting. It's, I mean, you, you talk about how people are getting so creative <clears throat> with blends and so forth. Even in the beer world, it's the same thing. I mean, everyone's yeah. coming up with the next new biggest blend. I mean, I, I was at a brewery a week and a half ago, and they celebrated an anniversary, and they put their whole birthday cake in the mash, a chocolate birthday cake with vanilla ice cream all in the mash, and made I a stout that. out of it. And it was actually phenomenal. Like, I got a friend mm -hmm. shipping me out. Some was that good. But it's just, I think a lot of people, my point is that people are looking for creative blends sometimes and, and trying new different things. I mean, you know, I don't know if, well, our, I don't know if our industry is as, as traditional as it used to be. You know what I mean? Like, well, and that's okay. Uh, that, and that's great. I, I like the innovation. I, I, uh, I mean, I've seen tea, wine, tea added to wine, uh, like tea, I think it was called tea wine. Um, I, um, I've seen chocolate milk, basically, or chocolate flavored added to wine. A cho a choco is it choco not choco vine um but th there's there's some brands out there obviously taking wine and aging it in bourbon barrels and sherry barrels and and things like that um i i'm all for it like it, play around with it you know wine has been fairly um non-innovative for a long time so i do like all those things i don't always like some of them work some of them don't yeah i don't right. always like the bourbon wines or the bourbon barrel wines, those are interesting to me, but yeah. that's not more than a half a glass. That's just me. Um, but but people love them. And, and yeah, it's worth trying it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and your beers to the same point, which have been so innovative. Um, I mean, you can find, you know, like uh, Voodoo Donut with, with, I think, is that Rogue? Oh, yeah, um, out of Oregon. Out of Oregon. I mean, you, you can't imagine some of the flavors. Like you said, they threw a whole, I love that, they threw the whole cake in there. Um, they're delicious. They're fun. Um, I tend to go back towards the pure stuff eventually, um, but I, I I love tasting some of that stuff. It's it's cool. And on blends in California, we don't have a, we don't have the rules that they have in a lot of places like Bordeaux or Burgundy, um, where we can we can we can I can take uh, Italian varietals and French varietals, um, whatever I want, and blend them together. So we have more flexibility. A lot of people in France. A lot of you know the the old producers, their kids are actually leaving um, Bordeaux or Burgundy and going to like the south of France where they don't have as many rules, or even coming to California or going to Australia or South Africa. They're going to areas where they have more freedom um, because there's almost um, um, and I'm by no means ever going to criticize Burgundy or Bordeaux, but some of the um, they have rules. They they have really strict rules um, or Chateau Pop or, or wherever you are. Whereas California, we stick to those rules sometimes, but sometimes we don't. And you see some really wacky um, varietals and blends coming out, and some of them work, and some of them don't. But but I'm all for innovation. I'm all for for playing 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 around with new stuff. Well, it's good. New I, stuff. I, I, I think that's, yeah, yeah, she's like thinking of new stuff. I think we got to catch. And it's interesting, Hunter. <laughs> I think I, we've all figured that out about you, like trying new stuff. Because I don't know too many other like wine producers that pulls out as many like new different areas wine from here this one that one like throughout a couple year period like you know when i had my shop we were always super pumped like what's the next treasure hunter wine coming out like you always so it's that's good it keeps on their toes and you know what our, there's a reason that all my customers loved your wines over everything else it was okay. it was that aspect of it i mean obviously they liked you too but it was yeah. nice having different wines come out yeah well it's fun doing you know most people haven't had a Tariga nacional ever um, well, they definitely probably haven't had one from California. So we're, we're, we, we stick with a lot of the cabs and the Chardonnays and, you know, the, 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 the varietals everyone knows. So we're, yeah. But not afraid to stick our neck out and try something different. No, we, we did. We're going to have some pre-rotted if it ever gets on the water. <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> from Spain, but uh, there's some speak shipping the, issues right at the moment. <laughs> speak of the devil, you'll see who just joined our chat, uh, Mr. Oh, Karen. oh goodness, I can see it. There I he is. For all the devil, Karen, he is the director of operations for Euro Fine Wines. So if you can never find wines when we do a Hunter and Joni show, just send him a private message, look up his name, <laughs> save it, harass the heck out of him. <laughs> send him a message like, why can't I find these wines? Where are they? <laughs> so now we put Karen on the spot. Sorry, Karen. Love you, buddy. Yeah. Um, so, so um, yes. Um, do we want to talk about the cab? Do you want to talk about moving into the yeah, cab? Yeah, let's talk about the yeah, cab. Yeah, let's get into it. I mean, this is this is kind of the, this is the new wine that I don't think anyone's had. This was the first time you guys have ever done it, correct? Yeah. Yeah. It came out right around the first, uh, the middle of January. Yep. So it's been out there a little bit. Um, um, it's it's just getting into various markets. So I uh, love Cabernet. We do a lot of Cabernet, uh, a lot of demand for Cabernet. Um, we, I love, I love the Lodi region for Cabernet. Um, so it was kind of a, it was kind of a no brainer to work there. I, we know a lot of producers. We know a lot of farmers there. Um, again, I cut my teeth there 20, gosh, now 21 years ago. Um, it's been fun to watch some of the brands that were really small grow up, um, in, into big national brands, Michael David, which does like petite, petite, lots of things like that. They were just they weren't small farmers, but they were, they were just, I don't mean just, they were farmers there, got into the wine mm -hmm. side and they've been hugely successful and, and, and good for them. Um, so Cabernet from Lodi um, tends to be pretty grippy, pretty, pretty powerful. It's really warm there. So fruit driven, um, typically a lot of oak is, um, it gets a lot of oak treatment. So you get some pretty intense wines from there. Um, they tend to be really a ton of a ton of flavor on the front and middle, and maybe fall off a little bit. But with that much, you know, they're typically high. They're just big, big powerhouse wines. Um, this wine is definitely Lodi. It definitely has plenty of power. But again, we wanted more of that balanced style. So I've had plenty of people taste this and say, "Ah, oh, Lodi wines are can be a little over over the top for me." And, I, and they try they try this, and they're like, "Oh." I can taste Lodi, but it's actually smoother, rounder, a little more supple, um, and, and easier to drink. And that's what we wanted. We, we definitely wanted it to be clearly a Lodi Cabernet, um, but we definitely wanted s some more softness and more drinkability. I like to say gulpability, quaffability, whatever you want. But sometimes the I like test. To... What's the that? Yummy the yummy test. Yeah, the yum factor. I'll... We... People make fun of me because I say the word yummy and they, they, maybe I'm like a child and I am a lot like a child. But the yummy factor, all of our wines should have a good yum factor. They should be like lip smacking and that del I saw delicious, like, mm, that tastes good. You just um, want more. Yeah, and you, just, you just want more coming back. So super excited, super stoked to release um, this wine. Um, you can get it in Ohio. You can get it in lots of states. It, again, it's it's coming. It's get, just getting out in the market. Um, but But – um, you know, I, I'm curious to get your feedback on it, Adam. I've drank, we, I drink it quite a bit. I, we drink a lot of cab. We drink a lot of wine in my house, as you can imagine. And I drink a lot of other people's wines too, but, um, this has been a recent favorite in, for me and, 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 in my family, not my family. I have three little kids, my wife and I, I'll put it that way. It's okay. You're slightly <laughs> European. You're allowed to let your kids have a thimble on Sundays. I, I do let my kids, um, taste wine. Um, I don't like water it down. It, I'm not urging you to do that. I just let them taste it because it's what I do and they're interested. I do feel like it creates more of a comfort with it and it doesn't make it um, taboo. So when they're of a drinking age, it won't be a real big deal. They've been around it. And what's fun with, with, with young, young people is they have such a pure palate. Their nose is so good that um, if you give them a few flavors, they'll-, they'll Actually, your youngest is pretty good at it. Yeah, she is. I'm a little worried, <laughs> worried about- well, youngest, she, she's she's fourteen. It's funny. So there was a question. Um, one of our guests did ask. He's like, just like the mumbo jumbo Pinot, is the cab a hundred percent Cabernet, or is there anything that's blended? Because what California's got to be ninety three percent cab to call the cab or something like that. Seventy five. Seventy five. Oh, it's seventy five. But this this one is. This yeah, is all. Okay. Yeah, all of these, all of the all of the the mumbo jumbo wines are a hundred percent varietal. All right. And, we, and, we, 
<clears throat> in Treasure Hunter, we play with it a little bit more because we can, because we tend to get samples, um, a bunch of different variety, varietals from the same vineyard. And sometimes we do um, play around with it a bit more, but this one, we definitely, um, yeah, we can do that. Well, we, 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 do both. we do a lot of, we do a lot of hundred percent varietals with treasure hunter as well, because like we're buying like, okay, we're trying your cab samples. Well, it's delicious. And that's, and that's what we'll do. But you know, that's not to say we wouldn't blend to, to Cabernet. Um, we have a new blend coming out in early June. It seems to be a Walla Walla one, but it's because again, the addition of the other varietals strengthened the wine. Yeah, that was that that wine that we're doing. And do we have a name yet, Joni? I think we decided on Smooth Operator. Okay, Smooth Operator. Um, <laughs> the, the league is out. Yeah, so look for Smooth Operator. The labels are not even done yet. <laughs> well, and, sorry if I, but anyway, um, it's a it's a fanciful name. It's not a trade. We don't worry about trademarks on fanciful names. I'll get a letter later from um, some from who, who's Smooth Operator. Okay. Smooth upper, that, and who sings that song? Sade. Sade, that's right. <laughs> so, He's like, isn't that a Michael Jackson song? I'm like, no, that's Smooth Criminal. <laughs> so, so um, this was a, in this case, the wine we're talking about, sorry, we'll jump, we'll go back to the cab, is we got a bunch of samples from one producer that we love. They were great on their own, and then we started playing around and blending. The Treasure Hunter, we don't blend um, other producers, but we will blend from one producer. So it's, so it's, it's their, uh, uh, it's their, it's, it's what they, what they intended. Um, but with this, with this mumbo jumbo cab, again, um, this should drink great on its own. Um, it should drink great with, you know, red meat, typical kind of, um, Cabernet stuff, but it should have enough softness to it where it doesn't have to have food. And, um, or I should say roundness kind of, um, smoothness, very round tannins. Um, but it should also um, um, it drinks great drinks great with food or, or without. It's 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 a very versatile wine, um, and we hope to get lots of glass pours um, with it because because we think it makes wine uh, it does improve food. Um, but again, it's a bit of a porch pounder if you want to do that too. So what this line can do for a small restaurant that doesn't like to have a lot of um, inventory, it's nice because they're like oh. We liked the Chardonnay from Mumbo Jumbo. I'm like, oh, look at we have this and this. I mean, for a small um, wine list, it's a it's a really good advantage to have a nice balanced um, selection. That's like, but still, the top sellers are probably a Chardonnay, a Pinot, and a Cab. Mm -hmm. So that's where that's part of the reason we pursued these varietals for Mumbo Jumbo. Yeah, and pursued them from the right areas for those varieties. Mm -hmm. So, um, what do you think? What do you think, Adam? Well, to give you my input, um, I I think most people are used to California farms and real strong, heavy fruited wines, and this isn't. Yeah, it's um, it's got the character, but there's something I like about it. I pick up a little bit of a veginess to it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they did whole clusters when they were making it, but I got a, just a little touch of grain at the at the front palate. And then it finishes in the mid and in the back with the more traditional Cabernet, like that black fruit and stuff. So for me, I actually really, really like it. Um, listen, I love a lot of those big, giant, fruit-forward sure. wines from California. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we just had a, a winery on a couple of weeks ago with some big, bold reds, and they were they were phenomenal. Yeah. But for me to like see a California wine that has a, a slightly different approach to it, at least for me, I, I think it's really, really good. Awesome. And for between $15 and $19. There you go. So, yeah, and, that magic price point it makes a huge difference. And the, and the, and the top is easy to get off. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I would agree, you know, almost almost like a Cabernet front, front um, to it. It actually was whole whole. You're right. It was whole cluster. Um, so so a little bit of that green component. It's not a. It's, it's not a lot. Food. It's just a little there. Yeah, it's but that, that really helps it with food too. Um, when you have a little bit of food with that, that really brings out the food. Um, but yeah, I would agree. Um, um, yeah, so consistency stylistically is what we want to be on Mumbo Jumbo. We have a long-term contract with the producer, um, with, with, with the grower, um, producer of, of that Cabernet. So, um, you know, again, there'll be some variability vintage to vintage, but it should be slight. 
if when you have when you have a wine that tastes the exact same vintage to vintage, maybe start questioning whether why uh, <laughs> you know, why because because there's so much variability. There's some chemistry in going on. <laughs> yeah, and, and and again, that's okay if you like those, but um, you may not. You may have a bit of more of a headache than you, you might think later. Sorry. So is but, this gonna is this, these contracts that you have? This is this is predominantly about the Lodi fruit. I mean, is as will this cab stay yes. in much Lodi? Yeah, the cab will stay Lodi. The Chardonnay is is getting somewhat of an upgrade um, to Sonoma, although again, Central Coast is amazing. Um, for us it was just more about um, getting a long term contract so that we could have Yeah, and just to kind of keep it interesting and yeah. Yeah. I mean well, I, think I think you guys killed it. I, another another phenomenal wine out of your portfolio from the Three, Three Finger Wine Company. I mean, I, I I like this wine a lot. I think this goes with a lot of different things, and I, I like the uh, the balance that it has. I mean, like I said, just that touch of green in the beginning, then this big fruit, and then you get just a little bit of chew on the on the back. It's a little bit of tannins that kind of gives it that full mouth feel and that, that and that character and that texture. I don't know. I'm very happy with it. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I see Karen. Um, uh, <laughs> Bring me some new wine, please. Kieran, we are working on that, of course. Um, I think you're getting some this week, aren't you? <laughs> I, I will I will plug something new we're doing, um, if that's okay, real quick. Or, or how, this is your, Adam, Adam, how do you want to do it? Hey, man, I, I, I produce the shows for you. This is your world. I'm just living in it. Uh, yeah, right. Um, <laughs> so so um, we are, and hopefully pretty soon, we might be a month away or, or, or so, um, we are starting with Treasure Hunter to import um, our first wines. We actually did one from the Colchagua Valley um, in Chile. It was a Cabernet um, quite quite many, many years ago, but we want to consistently do it. So um, the first wines we're going to be bringing in a red and a white pre-rock from just stellar producers. Um, I think that it's a 2013 on 13. the red. Mm -hmm. yeah, don't, let, don't like don't let that scare you in in places like pre-rot that's a good thing they age it they hold on to it for a long time so it's a beautiful it'd be like the chateau new, new de pop from spain correct like they're yeah, I mean, they're culty yeah the pre -rot, there's you know there's different regions that are sought after whether you're in california and people you know um want napa or even oakville or saint Helena. you know is kind of maybe on the elite level and there's plenty of other places that's not to leave out lots of other areas. Or in Washington State, you talk about Red Mountain or Walla Walla, um, in Oregon, Willamette. Um, well, in, in Spain, um, pre-rot, um, there's a couple of regions, um, obviously, you know, Rioja, but pre-rot has really continued to, to operate at the highest level. So um, we always wanna show a ton of value with Treasure Hunter. So those wines are gonna be, we feel exceptional, and it's a, it's a it's a it's a treasure hunter wine, but it's a new it's a new label. We've rebranded we've rebranded it as um, redesigned the label and rebranded it as Treasure Hunter International. Yeah. And we're very excited. And if we can just get the shipping companies to Yeah, I don't know if you guys know or not. <laughs> Container to put it in, we'll be good. Yeah, I don't know if you know or not, but we've had this thing called COVID and then we've had this this silly ship thing called Brexit. Got, we have Brexit and we have this silly ship that got stuck in the Suez Canal. And we had all kinds of weird things that have happened. So trans transport's not happening as much as we like. So it's been sitting in a con temperature controlled. It's not going to hurt the wine. It'll probably make it better yeah. uh, for about a month. And we're kind of losing our minds, but we we're trying <laughs> to do it as soon as possible. And then, as I mentioned, we do have a Walla Walla blend that is superb. Um, Joni, anything else you want to well, um, hint at? The next, the next round of our Viva La Vida, our Rosé Cava from Spain is in the same warehouse with it. Yeah. Um, so that is going to be ready to go roll this summer too. Um, then, yeah, just a new, a new Paso cab coming out with, um, from um, Treasure Hunter. It's, it's a I really think we're going to call Rough Rider. We're going to call it Rough Rider. Yes, we are. We because it's from kind of one of the premier, like original vineyards in Paso. They're kind of the cowboys of Paso. Um, so we kind of went with that for it, and we like alliteration. So we do, and it's a it's an ex, it's an exceptional. We I we know a lot of folks in Paso. We typically work off the west side of Paso. There's some great things coming out of the east side too. So this is a really high-end west side producer. Um, Cabernet, 
that will be um, that'll be called Rough Rider under Treasure Hunter, and we're probably I like the name Rough Rider. Rough Rider. <laughs> <laughs> I'd mention that to Roosevelt, Jeff. not anything else. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's the Roosevelt Rough Riders, and um, we definitely play with the first volunteer cavalry in our nation. The Rough Riders. We did our research. It is, <laughs> it is a um, um, safe name to use, but we definitely play we definitely play around with names um, and have fun with them. Um, but those are those are some of the up and coming things. And the, but with in terms of the mumbo jumbos, please keep drinking them. Um, they, they they should over they should hopefully over deliver for the price and be um, really well-balanced California wines that appeal to a broad spectrum of people, whether you're a wine geek or whether you're just getting into wine. Um, there should be enough fruit for those folks, and then there should be enough sort of acid and guts in there for the experienced wine drinker. So, um, yeah, I mean. And, and you guys are, you guys got a pretty strong presence in the Kansas City area too, I believe, because I know, I believe that we've had uh, one of your shops that's that's gotten behind these events in the past, so they're, they're a pretty big follower of the treasure hunter line, three finger wines. Um, yeah, Missouri side for sure. And um, then we're kind of doing a reboot in Kansas this year. So we'll just keep rolling there as well. So. Are there other states? I know they're not all of them, but if you don't mind, could you guys shoot off a couple of other states for- We're in Oklahoma, we're in Michigan, we're in- North Carolina. Um, North, North Carolina, Georgia, Louisiana, Arkansas, Alabama. My, my focus is missing. to get you guys in Arizona. I, I know, you know. Oh, I, we we've been um, we've been toying with Arizona. I, I, was, I was with a distributor for five minutes in Arizona, um, and we went out there. I really like Arizona. I feel like it's like a mystical, cool place. It's got some. It's the uh, next LA. It is the fastest growing area in the entire country. Uh, besides Maricopa Austin. County. Besides, you, might, you might be right. I mean, it's. It, yeah, I mean, it might have overtaken Ada and Canyon counties in Idaho. So. <laughs> which has been the fastest growing for the last five years. The, re, it's, the re your, it's your turn. Take it. Yeah, yeah America, I mean, a lot of people have been moving from California. I mean, yeah. you know, I got out here recently and just the housing market here is just blowing up. I mean, a lot of Californians are moving from San Francisco, L.A. into the uh, Arizona and Phoenix area. It's a massively growing area. People can't keep up. So oh, yeah. I'd love to I'd love to see the three, three finger wine company represented well. And I've got a good distributor here and a, and a good manager. So we've talked a little bit in the past. So now that I'm back here, I'm going to. I'll harp on them a little bit more and tell them. You that would be this. awesome. I, I, I love the state. And um, I just I just had a, a proprietor of a wine shop um, beg me to, to find a distributor there. So we'll talk. <laughs> Fair enough. I got the guy for you. Awesome. Good. I see a question saying, Adam, please email your followers a list of Hunter new wine, Hunter's new wines coming out so we can look for them. Um, Joni, can I, can I, ask you please to send Adam a list so so you can oh, do that. Of course, of course. Okay. They aren't out, they aren't out yet. Um, of course. I'll, I'll give you a forecast for the next um, four months. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, and uh, that's, Paige. that's Paige, she's, uh, you met Paige before at my yeah. shop, she's she's like family, so. Absolutely, no, yeah, I, love she, seeing that. I love seeing that name come up, absolutely. Yeah, her and her, her, and her husband, the kids, they're, they're amazing human beings, so. Absolutely. Well, um, you guys, I really appreciate you guys always taking the time. So I, before I get off, I, I, I had some ideas and, you know, I was going to talk to you privately about it, but screw it. I'm just going to throw it out there because, you know, why not? I was on the spot. I, well, it's not, nothing too crazy. I would love to do a blind wine tasting with Treasure Hunter and the rest of the crew, the three finger wines, where maybe we get a couple wine parties, some groups together where one person will know what the wines are. The rest of their party will not. We'll pick the wines. We'll put the numbers on them. And we'll walk through each wine and allow you guys to discuss each wine, the characteristics behind it while people taste it, and then see how many people guess the right wines at the end of the show. And that way we make it a little bit more interactive and we're still pushing your wines. Yeah, it'd be great. We could, get a, we, we could get a rep from um, like one of our state, each state. Well, you can even get a wine shop. Like if you guys have a place yeah. in Kansas City or Kieran, he's got a bunch of wine shops in the Cleveland market. If he has a better shop, say, listen, host yep. a, a, an event. We're doing a blind tasting. It's going to be 
with uh, with the people from Three Finger Wine Company, and we can pull in as many people as we want. So we could pull in a shop from uh, Kansas City, we could pull in a shop from Phoenix, we could pull in a shop from Cleveland, wherever. But it might be, and we could even do like a party, like Paige, if she has a couple friends over that night, we could even pull them in as a live feed and kind of make it a little more fun, kind of bring in a couple different groups and and do a blind tasting with with your wines and get people to really dive into them and and really understand the nose and the palate and, and all that. I'd, I'd love that, and I'd love to hear from them. Well, we, can, we can make Joe come, too. <laughs> I don't know Joe. No. Okay. Who's Joe? Okay. Oh, Joe, Joe. Our winemaker. Our winemaker. Our, oh, that's our Joe. Well, I've never met Joe, so that'd be super cool. Can we get him on? Sure. Or is Probably. he just to talk to people like other winemakers? No, no, he's he's very social, and he, he's great. Um, I've known Joan for a long time, and he's he's a wizard, and he's a good good human being. Um, so no, he'd be awesome. He's, I don't know how tall he is. He's like six, eight. So we'll have to build a special. So it's from me, five foot to him, six, eight. <laughs> um, Joe, Joe's an awesome guy. Funny thing about Joe is um, obviously he's got a great wine palette and stuff, but a lot of people, winemakers have wine in their mouth so much. They drink a lot of beer because when, when they're, when they're, when they're not um, um, drinking wine, cause they have wine in their mouth all day. So it's funny to talk to Joe. I'll, I'll ask him about other stuff, and he'll be like, "Yeah, that's good." And he'll usually bring the conversation back to beer. I'm like, "How can you?" There's a saying that it takes a lot of beer to make a good bottle of wine, um, and that's because a lot of winemakers enjoy, you know, the other beverage, the other adult beverages available as well. Um, yeah, that'd be awesome, and I'd love it, to hear back. It's funny from, because the the owner of our wine, our one of our main wine stores in town here, drinks only beer. Yeah. Or, well majority of the time during beer because I think he's just done it for so many years. Well, I think that's funny. I, I think we're ready for to do that, Adam. I think people are getting together again, finally, or have been doing it for a long I think time. So. Um, I had the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. So, um, Two. <laughs> so, so if I don't stroke out here pretty soon, we're pretty yeah, going to be good. We're all, we're all good. It's kind of not funny, but just drink more wine that offsets the whole blood clotting. <laughs> uh, you know, I actually, there you go. it does. There you go. Um, and I, I would so if you've had the Johnson and Johnson vaccine, I urge you to excuse to drink more. Yeah, I, I urge you to drink more mumbo jumbo. There you go. There you go. Um, well, thank I have you that, so are, you guys, are you guys not in the New Jersey market right now with your wines? We actually are courting somebody right now in the New Jersey market. We have someone who's going to probably get us most in those northeast, those smaller, small state, but smaller northeast states. So we should be yeah. this this year. Maryland, Maryland's brand new for us. Um, well, n Maryland is newly re-engaged with us. <laughs> we have a we have a, new, we have a new distributor there. So that whole northeast section, which which we've we've neglected, frankly, we have someone great there to help us throughout that. And frankly, during COVID, it was very hard to add new markets. People just people were adding new things. So we did actually add a couple markets um, thanks to some folks listening right now partially but for the most part um we did grow we had a good year um gr i'm grateful for that that we had, a, we had a good year we kept our head above water and uh, i think it's a good sign we've had a very 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 active april already yeah um so i think so we're already out there and getting out you know thank god i mean it's it, i don't want to say enough's enough because i'm sensitive for the situation, but it's oh, nice. Colorado, Colorado. I think all people across the board, whether you're one direction or the other, have all to the point where they want a sense of normalcy. Again. I miss I people and I miss parties and I miss hugging people. And of course, all that. <laughs> of course. So, and wine's usually part of that situation. So, I love the idea, Adam, and I'd love to get direct feedback from um, customers and, and viewers who are. Who, I'd love to hear them speak because, uh, Lord knows. Um, You've heard me speak about so there you go. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Like I said, we could pull in a couple different parties. We could we could pull in a wine shop and go five minutes with them. They could ask some questions and tell people what they're tasting and make this super interactive. And you know, maybe every five or five minutes or so, bring in a different shop or a wine party or whatever, and, and do the whole blind tasting. I think it'd, it'd be great to get feedback from people and get people engaged in the entire event. I dig it. I dig All it. All right. Well, we're gonna put together. You heard it here first. I think we're folks. having it. We're pretty close to a twenty-year anniversary for you um, in business, too. Correct? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, so, yeah. Uh, in this, in this iteration, in, in this yes. iteration. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we should. Anyway. We can do a twenty twentieth anniversary. 
and we'll throw a cake. In anniversary the, blind we'll tasting. Throw, we'll throw a cake in the uh, in the vat, and, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll we'll stop on the cake. <laughs> yeah, could be interesting. Let me let me know how that works out for you guys. <laughs> Not well. I don't think. Yeah, I can't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Then we're gonna put together it now. Uh, folks, we'll, we'll, I will be working with uh, Hunter and Joni. We're going to put together a little blind tasting. And um, just if you always want to know what kind of shows are coming up, go to winemakerwinetastings.com. It's always the best place to go and see when our shows are, who's coming up next. Um, we've got some cool stuff going forward, and I will get into that momentarily. But I would like to thank both of our guests, Mr. Hunter and Joni. Thank you so very much for being a part of our show. And obviously, I love doing these shows with you guys. You guys are the best. We're grateful. Thank you. It's good to see yes. you. Buddy. Thank you so for much, sure, Adam. Sure. And, uh, Hunter, and everybody you gotta go, go easy on the traveling, man. Don't beat yourself up too much. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm doing. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I appreciate it. Thank you as Absolutely. always. Absolutely. So, uh, folks, remember, Three Finger Wine Company, go to their website, see all the wines they have available. Always call the local shops around. And uh, if you're looking for stuff, whether it's Treasure Hunter, One Time Spaceman, Mumbo Jumbo, and everything in between, um, again, thank you guys both for being here. Um, love having you guys. Always a pleasure. We'll get our next show booked with you guys very, very soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, folks, I appreciate you all coming in tonight and joining us on our awesome wine tasting with some pretty awesome people. Um, I absolutely love working with Hunter and Joni. They've been uh, nothing but amazing. So, um, I don't know how many people were able to find the wines. It's not always the easiest. I know it's sometimes challenging. And um, we've been really pushing a, a, a little bit more effort with some of our local wine shops. Uh, the Cleveland Market, we've been working a little bit more with Red Wine and Brew. And I've got a place in Hudson, North End in Hudson. And we also have a place, uh, Bottle um, bottle the Grape, down in Canton. So we've got a couple shops that we're working on. They're going to start carrying these a little bit more often. It's still the beginning phases, so I appreciate your patience. But just if you're looking for the wine, honestly, just call your favorite shop, anything that's close to you. It's not hard from the get. There's... there's very small minimums. They are easy to get. So uh, next show, if you see it and you want to be a part of it, by all means, call your shop and get it. Also, I wanted to take this opportunity to tell you, if you want to have some people over to your house and you want to have a little bit of a wine party, I would love to bring your wine party into our live show. We've done it before. It's an absolute blast. Um, <clears throat> I have a friend, Mindy, out in Cleveland, and she's brought a bunch of people over to her house and Everyone kind of brings some snacks and then she brings the bottles in and uh, we're able to bring them into the show. And it's cool because then all the guests there are able to interact with our winemakers and our guests and ask questions. And it becomes a really fun night out. So um, great way to get together at your home and have some people over. So if you'd like to have a wine party, contact me. I'll help you plan the whole thing, explain how the costs work, um, how many bottles you need for how many people. Um, I'll give you some food pairings, all that good, awesome stuff. So and we'd love to bring you on to the live show. Uh, with that being said, I do have some other winemaker events coming up. I have our first international winemaker tasting uh, with the Count from Villa Calcinaia, Count Sebastiano Capone. Uh, awesome guy. He is on the west side in the Chianti region of Italy, and he makes a bunch of different wines, including a really good olive oil. Um, but we're going to have him on. We're doing a Friday night show with them because of the time change. It's a little challenging for him to be up late on a Wednesday. So check our calendar again at winemakerwinetastings.com and we'll be doing a tasting with this wines uh, towards the end of the month. And then our folks over at the Jean-Charles Bosset collection that we did Buena Vista, we have some of their other wineries that are going to be coming on. We're finalizing dates with them like the Raymond and some other ones. We're working on a Bastille Day event coming up as well, which is a very special day in France. So some other tastings coming up as well. And then I'm going to be planning some uh, tastings out here in Arizona where I'm going to bring in some friends and do some fun, goofy stuff and just be silly and have a good time. So with that being said, thank you very much for joining us. I very much appreciate it. I'm going to go and dive back into my mumbo jumbo Pinot Noir because I like it an awful lot. Don't judge me. And I really hope to see you at the future shows. If you see a winery that you'd like to see on our show, by all means, shoot me a message. I will reach out to anybody and harass the heck out of them until they say yes. So we will get them out. So have a wonderful Wine Down Wednesday. Thank you for joining us. And I will see you guys all very, very soon. All the best to you. Cheers. <laughs>